Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to the workshop. Uh, I can only apologise for not making any videos recently, I and mean, I've been taking advantage of the nice weather that we've been having here in the UK, and I've been out there flying my models, so uh, apologies for that. In today's video, we're going to take a look at stripping down um, an Irving 53 two-stroke engine to replace the bearings. Uh, I've taken this engine out of a Watt 4 that's done about um, 500 hours and the bearings are starting to get a little bit rumbly, a little bit on the noisy side so I thought now's the time to do that job. Um, this video will just be the strip down of the engine um, just to measure the bearings. Once I've got the bearings I'll do another video on how to assemble it uh, back together in working condition. So uh, if I spin the camera around onto the workbench you'll be able to see exactly uh, what I'm up to. So here's the two stroke engine, the Irving 53. Absolutely superb engine these are. Um, it's a pity that they don't make them anymore. They're cheap and cheerful, very powerful for the size. Uh, lovely, lovely bit of kit really. So the first thing we do is don on our PPE. I've got some, uh, some gloves. This is to protect me from heat and uh, any sharp corners when we come to change the bearings. Uh, just look a quick look at the kit we're going to use. Uh, we've got an Allen key, a marker pen, screwdriver, another set of Allen keys just in case we encounter some other sizes, a hot air blower paint strip gun and also a tub uh, from the local Chinese takeaway to put the parts in so we don't lose anything. I'll put that at the top. So taking a look at the engine, the first thing we've got to do is to remove the cylinder head, which is done by removing these uh, Allen bolts there at the top. So uh, I've already got the Allen key there ready to go. So we'll just undo that. The prop driver's just slipped off. Drop that in our tub so we don't lose anything. So we take the, these screws out. I hope you can see what we're doing. I've already cracked these loose, so I know we're not going to encounter any difficulties getting the screws out. And I've also match marked the cylinder head with the marker pen. So uh, when we come to assemble it again, it goes back in the right place. Well, in the same place, which I've done here. It looks like it's rubbed off slightly, so... I'll I'll just put a little marker pen mark on so we know which way around it is. Undo all the bolts. These were really easy to undo to be fair. I was lucky we didn't have any tight ones or anything so it's not the easiest job to do with gloves on but It just stops your hands getting messy and uh, you won't get your fingers damaged on any sharp edges or anything. So one more to do. And this will also show you the condition of the rest of the engine really. Which I would imagine is going to still be pretty good on this. I always run my engine slightly rich uh, which tends to save them a little bit. There we go, so we just break the seal and we lift that off. Mm. Looks like the line is coming out with it, to be fair. Which I didn't want, but hey, hey. Yeah, that, that's quite unusual for that to happen, but it saved me a job. The actual liner has come out with... The liner has slid out with... Uh, with the cylinder head it actually comes apart there but this is really tight at the moment so oh, that's it that's break the seal so yeah normally it leaves the liner inside there so we'll just slide that out the one thing to be aware of uh, with the piston and liner is the top of the line it's got a little notch there and there's a tiniest dowel I don't know if you can see that in the top face 
where the cylinder head beds down there I'm just showing it with the allen key that lines up with that that's to stop the liner from rotating so the next stage is you can pull that liner out just inspect it, it looks really nice there's no bad scores in the balls or anything so that looks really good to go to be fair drop that back in the parts box the next bit is to take off the back plate again i've match marked it with the marker pen so we know which way around but this is quite uh, quite obvious because you'll notice a shape difference on the inside uh, when we take it apart anyway so drop the screws in the tub Undo all the screws. A few of the lads at the club have asked me how I do this in the past, so I thought I'd do a video just to show. It's really simple. Anybody with average DIY skills, I'm sure if you've built your own models and you're capable of doing that, you're more than capable of stripping one of these little two strakes down without any issues so okay just give that a bit of a wriggle and that back plate will come off and you'll see on the inside it's got a flat that goes to the top which gives clearance on the piston as it comes down just be aware of the very small seal in the bottom there try not to damage that obviously you don't want to break that drop that in the parts box and what do we see inside you can see the big end of the piston uh, the back of the crank and you can just see at the bottom of it uh, the back bear in there and that's what we're aiming to remove so now you've got to get the um, your, your con rod there the big end on the con rod off that uh, big end off the crank there so now we've taken the liner out that's given enough slap on that piston enough clearance to get that off so usually if you give it a little tap they work themselves off or failing that just get a, a pair of pliers just to ease it off but before i'll uh, also match mark the back of that so we know that that piston's going to go back in the right way around i'll just get me uh pliers in it's only the oil that's holding it just give that a little wiggle and she should he says come off as it has there so now we just feed the piston through the top and out she comes so it's just simple as that dropping it off not a problem at all like i say we've match marked it now so that piston will only go back the one way no signs of damage looking around the piston no real score marks just wear marks as you'd expect a, an engine of this age to have so looking in the back now you can see the crank and that crank has got to come out and you can see it's it's there already if it's tight um, you can just warm it up slightly and then just give it a little tap and it'll come straight out like that so that's your main crank main part of the engine see there's no damage there's no scoring around the outside it's just uh, a little bit stained as you'd expect but otherwise she's in great condition so now comes to the interesting bit or one off we can take the carburetor off just by these two little pinch screws i'll take that off at the same time even though you could possibly leave it on but i'll take it off just to show you how simple it is to come off there is a small washer on there fiber washer I'll drop that in the parts box take the other screw and then the carb should just come off which it does slide fit oops come on baby there you go the carburetor's out Notice the rubber O-ring, uh, obviously keep that intact, otherwise we're going to get air leaks and everything when we come to put it back together. So uh, 
just keep that in good condition drop that in the parts box and now we're just left with the actual crankcase with the bearings there those are the back ones this is the front one so we've got to get get those out now you'll see lots of other videos on the internet on youtube etc that says put it in the oven at 230 degrees for half an hour and all this sort of thing i found that to be to be honest a complete waste of time and uh, the quickest way of getting the telling off by the wife so what i tend to use is a hot air blower gun just a normal paint stripper warm it up evenly and uh, the bearing should just come out really quite simple so uh, we can warm it up put it down there play the heat all the way around don't concentrate in one place you don't want to get distorting the case and just warm it up it's as simple as that get it nice and hot and what we're going to do is remove the rear bearing first So we'll warm it up. This will be the same sort of temperature as the operating temperature of the engine when you're running it in your in your model. So we're not looking for excessive heat. We're just looking to warm it up. But the the main part is is to play that heat all the way around the crankcase, just to uh, heat it up evenly. Keep the top ones up as well. Once we've heated it up, it's just a case of giving it a sharp tap and those bearings should pop out. So that feels like it's pretty hot to me. So we're going to give it a go. Let's move that out of the way. Get your crankcase and give it a sharp tap and there's the back bearing straight out no messing you can see that they're slightly corroded that's where the rumbling's coming from then all you do is get an allen key or a screw anything that you can get up the back there to get onto the, the front bearing so i think i'm going to use the biggest allen key that i've got which is about there and then just give it a tap and there you go that's the front bearing out it's as simple as that ladies and gents you can see that they're out clean as a whistle no messing at all so that leaves both our bearings the front one's got a shield on it to stop any dirt going into it and it's open at the back so you get the maximum lubrication the back bearings there are open on both sides so it uh, gets most of the oil out of the fuel when it's running you can actually feel that they're a bit rumbly so that's it i'm going to measure those bearings get the new ones on order and uh, we'll make another video on how to assemble the engine uh, back to running order again so uh, hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please like and subscribe and uh, come back again and see how the rest of it uh, is put together